All right, welcome back to the Dr. Jimbo Love Show pick, uh, featuring Patrick the Picker. This is Patrick's Super Bowl today, and we are going to just... Welcome to Kentucky Derby Day. He is a visionary. He and I is know. a revolutionary. <laughs> he is Patrick the Picture. Patrick the Picture. <laughs> with Dr. Jimbo. Yes. Hey, and we started out with two undercard or under, what do you call these, under races. Undercard uh, today at Churchill. At Churchill Downs. The first one was Throwing one. left and right hooks right out the gate today. Floppy, uh, floppy shoes. Floppy socks. Or floppy the seven. Return to seven. six to one. And we just hit Zozo's race two. It's going to return close to five to one yep. on the winners. Two for two out the gate today. Two for two. Yep, we're going to get started. For those who don't know, it's Kentucky Derby Saturday, the first Saturday in May, the running for the Roses. My Super Bowl, my Rangers may be eliminated, but we are here. Those of you guys like to get dressed up, the real betters, we wear our secret hat and our wrestling shirts, and we sit the finish line just like we did at the Belmont, yeah. and we got to get that money. The picker is here. We're going to get into some sports, and then we're going to break down the derby for you today. You know it. That is well said. Well said. And people like me just wear the, our favorite beer and uh, well, we our hockey sweater. I got blue shorts and a red shirt with the good old US of A hat on. And then he's got no, not even colors. planned. Didn't even plan it. Nope. Just just showed up at, at the studio and at the I bar today. I should have bought him a wrestling shirt, but the best there is in the in the wrestling besides the head of the table. I thought I'd wear him today for the run for the roses. You know the roses. You know it. This is great. So yeah, we're gonna do a little talking about uh, NBA, a little NHL. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about women's sports, the upcoming World Cup. Again, that's pretty far in the future, but we're just going to kind of highlight it because that is uh, what Just Women Sports had on their website this morning. And uh, folks, get out there and look at Just Women Sports if you're trying to see what is going on in women's athletics across the world. All right, there's some huge news. Um, I was in Wisconsin all week, and uh, I can't believe this, that after five seasons... Uh, and winning an NBA championship in 2021, first one for the Milwaukee Bucks uh, since 1970 or 71. It was 50 years. Um, the Bucks fired their coach, Mike Buckholzer, and he had the best winning percentage of all the teams in the NBA this year. They were a number one seed, but they didn't like what they saw in the playoffs, and uh, there were a couple situations. Uh, where they had double-digit leads in Game 4 and Game 5 in the playoffs. Uh, didn't use his final timeouts in either of these two opportunities. Um, didn't call a timeout when it would have advanced the ball to mid-court. Um, and the Bucks got rid of him. So that is the big news in the NBA along with the playoffs. The Bucky suckies just like the Rangers. I'm going to let Jim break down the sports. I will be here. If you see the hat turn, it's because we got live racing going on today. Can't miss any opportunities here. We're going to talk here. about the NHL. We we'll, need your insight. We're going to do the NHL, break it, uh, what I can down for you, and then we'll give you any odds that we can for a day. I'm going to let Jim give you the stats, though. Break it down. Bucky Sucky, Coach out. You can't lose 4-1 is one of the overwhelming favorites, and expect to stay around. Get him out. All right. Let's start out with the East. And we've got the number eight Heat versus the number five Knicks. That series right now is go one Knicks one. Go Knicks go. Great horse, by the way, Jim. Go Knicks go. Great. One of the all-time bats. Okay. Uh, game one, the Heat won. And game two, the Knicks won. So uh, next game is Saturday uh, today at 1.30. So we'll have that on a little bit here today at Brothers Bar. We'll not Bar be on Grill. volume. The Derby will be on volume. So the bird, yes, we have the Derby on volume. Of course, he's taking Knicks over the Knicks are plus TVs. four and a half today on the road at the Heat. Peter missing, I believe. Is Butler still out? Uh, Butler's not playing this game. So Butler's out. Hero, obviously, probably going to miss the whole playoffs. 
Give me the Knicks plus four and a half. We're already doing our picks. We're not even going to wait. Four and a half on the road today. Finish up. Right on. 76ers. Uh, the Celtics, uh, that's two to one. They played last night. Sixers won the first game. Celtics won the second game. Celtics won the third game. And their next game is Sunday at 1.30. Uh, this is all Eastern East Coast time. Um, in the West, you got the Nuggies, number one seed versus number four. Uh, the Suns, the Nuggets are up two to one. They won the first two games. Um, uh, Chris Paul was out. The third game, the Suns ended up winning. I don't think he's going to play for a while. You think he's done for a bit? Three to four games? Yeah. yeah. And that's going to be enough for the Nuggets to, I think, overpower. And, and Suns won at home, though. That's what they had to do. Uh, the Nuggets, I think, are plus two and a half on the road next game. I think the Nuggets steal one, come back, and win at home, take it pretty easily. I do, too. That's my pick as well. All right, and then we got our last guy is, of course, the Golden State Warriors versus... Before we get there, how come the Celtics play better against the Sixers when the MVP of the league is in the lineup? Does anybody understand this? I don't know. It is a weird phenomenon. Celtics were minus two on the road last night. They won by 12, and they've been playing... They lost the first game when the beat was not in the lineup, correct? Right. Yes. So... Can somebody figure this out? But I can't. I don't know. But if it beats in the lineup, take the Celtics. That's how I'm going to start betting. That was your girl with the blue hat, too. What's her name? Uh, Christina. Christina. Her dad's a trainer. One of my biggest friends of all time. Yes, we have the, the, the Kentucky Derby coverage going on right now. I have two of them. Show. She's one of two. She is. She's okay. a TVG gal, aka now the fan duel, but she does NBC coverage. My other one also works for TV. I give her a big uh, thumbs up for the hat today. Best looking hat I've seen so far. Nice blue hat. I, don't, I like it. It's simple. It's I like a little bit of the tassel on the side. Well, you guys will have to go I mean, through that and watch Jim, it. Look at that. <laughs> we don't get much better than that. This, this only comes out for big days and big trips. Oh, my gosh. Uh, we have an honor today. I, I don't even know where you bought it for $8. Maybe Walmart. Not eight. Was it Target? Online, and it was more than 8 You can rest sure that and it survived Las Vegas numerous times, survived the pool numerous times, and it's here today. What's the next game? Yes, the next game is Warriors Lakers. Okay, that series right Warriors. now is one to one, and the Lakers win the first one. Uh, the Warriors win the second game. LeBron versus Seth Curry. So, what do you think the next game is uh, for the Warriors Celtics? They play tonight at six thirty Eastern time. Um, they're minus three and a half at home about the Lakers. The Warriors are not a good road team. I'm going Warriors. I'm going to go with the Warriors as well. I just don't think the Lakers have enough. I, I, I think they're, I, I want to say too old because the Warriors are not very young. Right. Seth is, if you actually look at Seth and what he's done, Seth is actually getting to be an easier in yes. terms of NBA standards. Oh, yeah. Um, give me Warriors. Plus three and a half. Give me them for the series. No. I, I'm taking the Warriors next game and the series. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in complete. From my buddy uh, Keaton in Albuquerque. I hope the Lakers win, but other than that, no. All right. Again, the more, majority of our coverage today is going to be the Kentucky Derby. Let's move on Let's, to NHL you know, yo, hockey. Giddy up, giddy up. Let's go. We're going to move through right. these. Give me the picks and move it. The big, the big story, of course, everybody knows it. Uh, you know, number one Boston at 64 the, the wins. The number one story was the Rangers losing this Okay. So the Rangers lost two. We were going to talk about that in a second. <laughs> but Boston had 64 wins, 135 points, set all these records. And ends up losing in Game Seven, and they are out. Colorado, same thing, lose to the Kraken. So both number one seeds are gone. This is a wide open field now for the Stanley Cup, um, and also, as we said, the Rangers are out as well. Let's break this down. Boston, let's start. With, let's start with Eastern. Let's start with the Boston. With, I think was Boston. I think was hurt. They were kind of hurt going into the playoffs. It was a bad time for them to, to get cold, if you will. Uh, I believe they had a lot of injuries, and I think Florida was up now 2-0. Yep. They took two in Toronto. I think Florida, as you can tell, is hot. They got they got the good parts. Great goal tending right now from Wiley Vet. They made a couple trades, and they look really good. 
Uh, Boston up 3-1. I just think that they were cooling down at the wrong time. I think their injuries, hockey, they don't really describe them. I think that's what's going on. Rangers, very simple. They made trades to get talent. They gave up youth. And it shows. Yep. The Devils are fast. The Rangers look slow. The Rangers may have put up some big wins, made it to seven, but the problem is, is that the youth and, and quickness prevail. And the trades at the deadline, jury to me is to blame for. It. They want, they want uh, Bugs Bunny, as I call him. They want his head, the head coach. But it's jury's fault. You brought in these players. They were playing very good hockey going into that trade deadline. As soon as they got Tarasenko and Kane, not that they're bad players, but did they fit the part? Right. Maybe if you get those guys to a younger team who's fast and works out. But this team had no speed. Game seven looked flat. Turnovers, embarrassing. As a Ranger fan, embarrassing. Good for Frank at Barstool Sports. Good for you, but the problem is now you're on tilt because you guys just got blown out by the Caniacs and are down 2 nothing. So we have two series in the NHL after the first round was so tight and in the East was 2-0. Yes, we're going to talk about that right now. That's the Toronto, Florida series. The Panthers jumped out and are up 2 nothing. Uh, they it won on the road out last night. Well, they won on the road too. So they're going back to Florida and uh, uh, Carolina blowout. Panthers going on. Yeah, I'm talking about Toronto. Sorry, I'm jumping the I'm excited today. We've got two wins in the books. I don't know if we can contain him today, folks. Easy. Take a deep breath. Well, what do they say in anger management? Oops, they say have another beer. <laughs> so anyways, Toronto is down. They're facing a tough situation. They have to go down to Florida and win. Toronto's on suicide watch. Uh, and I'm telling you right now, uh, the Panthers are just playing out of their minds. Carolina Hurricanes, New Jersey Devils. Carolina Hurricanes out to a 2-0 uh, lead very early. Next game is Sunday, 3.30 in New Jersey. So we'll see if Carolina can turn that around on the road. Western Conference, we've got uh, Vegas and Edmonton. Uh, just only one game in that series has been played so far. Vegas won it 5-4. Next game is Saturday today, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Dallas Stars, Seattle Kraken, 1-1. One one. Game 3 is in Seattle, Sunday, 7.30. All right. So... That's all I've got for hockey. What else did you want to talk about with these? What do you, how do you feel about I don't think series? the Devils didn't come down to nothing. I don't. I mean, I didn't. I mean, they came back against the Rangers. I, I wouldn't count them out. But personally, I think the Caniacs are set up pretty good. Uh, I don't think that you're going to be able to beat them in a seven-game series down to nothing. If they come home, uh, they've turned that barn into a great barn. I don't see it happening. I see the Caniacs advancing. Toronto. Every year, it's like they're on suicide watch, like close the towers. Uh, they were very high and mighty. They asked for Florida. After they went, well, they got Florida, and the uh, the business suites just got swept at home to nothing. And so, good luck to Toronto. I don't know about that one. I I, I can see him coming back and making a series as a winning it down to nothing. No. The worst thing for the NHL that could happen might be to have the Panthers and say the Kraken in the finals. It'll be the worst things all the time. Not to take away from people. Well, Florida didn't have any fan base. Seattle's getting better and better every year, so not to take away from them. But that's probably the worst case scenario. They're they're wanting to whatever. Vegas Edmonton gonna be a good series. They want yeah, it's probably like Carolina and the Dallas Stars. Too. There's gonna be no defense in that in that series. Six four should be a, a significant sign that that is gonna be no defense. That offense is gonna talent them. It's gonna be who can honestly give up the less goals, make a couple big saves, and save a couple odd man breaks. Right. That's really what that series should be. Vegas quietly. After, I was gonna ask you about the Vegas series. What do you think? Vegas quietly after a, a great inaugural year has kind of been floating under the radar this year. Obviously, they're the second best team in hockey. Right. Edmonton better be careful. So everybody thought, oh, okay, Edmonton. I mean, they got Drysdale, Connor. They got a great squad. But can they hit in this defense and goalie? I don't know. I see it going six or seven, high scoring affair. Very exciting. Which for hockey, this is what people essentially want in hockey. Um, I see the night. I'm open for the Knights. That now that the Avalanche are out, I'm rooting for uh, Knights playing more team hockey, a little yes. bit more defense. 
not much better goaltending, but a little better goaltending. Yep, going with my uh, buddy from high school's team. He loves them. He's got season tickets. So Vegas, Vegas, Vegas out of the West. Kraken still went on the road in Dallas. Which shocked me. To come out, maybe there's a little hangover. Dallas came right back. Talk about a barn that's been very hot lately when they get rolling. Dallas. That place gets erupting, but same to go. You're going to hit the road against the crack, and I see this as a split again on the road, maybe one and one. Right. So we take it back to Dallas for best of three. Are you going to give the home field advantage to Dallas? Kraken just seems to be a little bit like the Knights. Like, they just have it. Yeah. They're tightening up on defense. They're getting it good enough and, and above average goaltending when they need. Uh, but I do see Dallas as a quick team. They have veterans. I think the West is going six or seven both games. I'm going to lean with Vegas. Not a great one. And honestly, I'm going slight, to slightly lean with Dallas. But I think the Kraken can do it. I think the Kraken can go play the winner of them and possibly, you could possibly see two of our teams that have just started in the last yes. 10 years yes. face End off to yeah. go to the West. Which could be interesting, Kraken and uh, Vegas, nice. On to the dirt. We're going to go on to the Derby. Let's just mention real quick. Yeah, do the women. Real fast. Gonna, we're doing a very abbreviated race. section. He's awesome. Okay. That's our guy right there. I was going to wear a shirt today. Because, I wore a well, technically you can wear your pink on Saturday, but Ladies' Day yeah, is awesome. Kentucky Oaks Day. You're supposed to wear your pink on Friday. Uh, you can wear your pink on Saturday. Jim and I went red, white, and blue for the US of it. That's right. That's right. All right, so one, one thing we're going to just mention about the women's portion here is uh, soccer update. The World Cup prep game and the final selection. Monday, June 26th is the selection, final selection for the team. And then they turn around July 9th, and you and I, the United States will be playing against Wales and San Jose, California for a tune-up game. Um, after that, we are going to move into uh, the round of uh, for the World Cup, and uh, we'll be playing each one of, of the people that are in our division, um, station, or however they call it there, so be watching for that. All right, so what everybody's been waiting for and what Patrick's been waiting for is the Kentucky Derby. Patrick's got it all lined up here for us. He's going to walk you through almost every single horse. You're going to have all your bets and all your picks. And go ahead, Patrick. First off, let's do a cheers. All this right. is the start of summer. Horse racing, baseball, golf. Some of us, our loser hockey teams are over. For us, we're getting ready to face the Stanley Cup Finals. For those of you in basketball, same thing. But drink your drink. I already drank mine. Ultra, please. Hey, by the way, we are at Brothers Bar and Grill in the shops of Northfield. Come on down. We've got, as you can hear in the background, we'll have the Kentucky Derby and all the under races, uh, undercard races going on all day long. Uh, come on in. FanDuel is allowing you to bet. Um, I did a $5 bet on the very first uh, race and uh, floppy shoes for the floppy socks. Floppy, floppy socks. socks wins. I didn't know the name of it. I gave Jim the horse and I didn't even get my bet in. He didn't get his bet in. <laughs> Six to one. But when the next race, so so I got. Jim, yep. Jim and I, I, my, my phone was up. We're very here. excited we're around here today. <laughs> so we're hitting race seven, which I'll post here in about 16 minutes Mountain Time. Uh, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six more great races, all very big races, uh, top horses, uh, great fields. Uh, and the start of the, the summer racing. Uh, we'll get right into it though. We're going to the Derby. We're going right to the Derby. Got some big stories to tell you about. First off, Forte, the juvenile, yeah, the juvenile breeders winner, which is usually the trend in the best horse for the three-year-olds, which is what we're racing today. Got scratched with the Bruce foot. I saw uh, Michael Spoli. He is a uh, New Yorker, Italian guy. Actually, used to own. He sold out vitamin water to Coca Cola. Oh, that's, that's guy. one of his claims to fame. And uh, he's very big in the horse racing. Saw his interview this morning. It was quite sad. Uh, he almost had no voice because he hasn't slept. He's been speechless. Very sad when you can't get the odds on David in there. But in the best interest, especially in the last ten years, for the horse. The other thing we got to talk about is Churchill Downs has had a little controversy. 
They had four horses die within almost a matter of seven to ten days. Oh my goodness. Two of them trained by the same Joseph, uh, which was the trainer uh, for his old, uh, Lord Miles, who was scratched. He, two of his horses died uh, throughout the week during the training and, or racing. Uh, they decided to suspend the trainer because obviously what they found in the horses they were not happy with. And because of that, Lord Miles, not that he did anything wrong as a horse, is going to be suspended and not allowed into the Kentucky Derby for fear that it may happen again. Did they test Lord Miles to see if she had, she had I haven't gotten that they did as of yesterday did not give the details. Essentially, trainer suspended, your horse is out, we're not doing this anymore. So they're trying to make some statements, which is But well, we don't want somebody dying on the track in the Kentucky Derby, right? Well, especially if a horse goes, usually the jockey goes. So you're gonna get a horse possibly euthanized and then you're gonna get a jockey severely injured or whatnot. Uh, the, it's it's sad because watching Lord Miles, their their contingency won the Aqueduct in a very great race. Uh, very big long shot, and the excitement on the people who are closest to that horse, the lower level people, were so excited to hear that news kind of broke my heart. But again, as, as, as it goes, um, it's a statement that if you're going to have a trainer, and he has this going on, and then they're going to test you, and then maybe what's something going on, you're not, they're not dealing with it anymore. They're trying to clean up the game, they've been trying to clean up for years, and it's a step in the right direction. On that note, number one is Hip Show, came out of the same race as Lord Miles, uh, did not, he did not really have a great race, ended up actually fighting hard to uh, lose by a nose to Lord Miles. This is in the Wood Memorial Aqueduct, and this is our number one hit show. Uh, his morning line odds are 30 to 1, his live odds right now are 26 to 1. Um, trained by Brad Cox, who is now like the Bob Baffert of training essentially this last couple of years. For trainers, he has four horses, four out of the contingency going in. But that's a big number. This is one of his. This one can make. I want to write him off. I did not like his prep race. I think he can make a running today, though. Uh, lost by a nose. He needs a big effort. The whole thing in the Derby is being on the rail with that many horses and kind of get leaned in. Uh, so you usually get written off. I went right off hit show, put him at the bottom of your exhaust, your trifecta, superfecta. Number two, verifying. Brad Cox, second horse. Tyler Gaffneone is riding today. Uh, did very well in both uh, the Rebel, which is an Oakland Park grade two race. Bluegrass, which is a great one, both derby friends. He finished second by a neck in the bluegrass uh, to probably my odds of my, my favorite today. And then the it's Rebel. Verifying. This is verifying. And he finished, I did not like his race in the Rebel, but it looks like a tough horse and could be his day to giddy up and go. A strong horse. I don't know what to make of him. He's, he could be tired. Or he could be really good and finish in the top two, three, maybe even win the damn thing. Uh, again, right now, not my horse at verifying. Three, uh, the number three horse is two fills, so don't get confused. Number three horse, two fills. Great, 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 great race in his derby prep race. Took off, won by five and a fourth lengths. He's getting ridden by Loveberry, not a very big name jockey, not one of our top ones. Um, Right now, he is 8-1, to one, and he is one of your top five favorites. Uh, he kind of got loose on the lead and then took off. My thing with getting loose on the lead in your derby preps is you're getting all the better horses, and these leads aren't going to go as easy as they once did. Uh, but looks very good. He has blinkers on, and it looks like it served him well. Something to worry about. Confidence game. He ran number four. Number four. Are we going all 18? We're going quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, Keith the Stromo trainer. Uh, Graham is the jockey. He did not run a secondary prep race. He won the Rebel, got enough points to get in. That day was in the slop. So it's kind of hard to judge this horse. Slop being it was rainy, it was a nasty day. If the track was sloppy, I'm sure you'd see this horse take. But it looks like a nice day. It's going to be uh, sunny, a little bit overcast later, fast track. He won by about a length in that race. Uh, people think he could be a good underdog shot. My thing about this horse is I believe the owner 
Yes, the owner's stables is Don't Tell My Wife's Stables. If you've ever seen the YouTube video, I have a group chat with the boys. Don't Tell My Wife's Stables. There's something about this horse that intrigues me. Uh, right now, 17 to 1, open to 20, uh, 20 to 1. Give a look out here. My, my pick of the my pick of the whatever. I'm worried he's gonna be tired, but this is my pick. Number five, Trapper Trice. Sires is the jockey, Todd Fletcher is the trainer, Sire Tappet. He won the bluegrass, which is probably one of the best uh, derby preps going on. Is still, still five to one? Uh, no, because of, well, close. Because of Forte, he was five to one, nine to two. So he's right now currently the second favorite with one of our other horses. We'll talk about. Gotcha. Um, he's the gray. I used to hate the grays. When you look at a sheet, when I look at a sheet, first off, he caught my eye just with the name. Then you read into him, and then he's a gray. He's my pick. It's not going to be the easy. It's going to be the odds-on favorite, the second favorite. You're not going to get the best price. You're going to get five to one, but came out of a good one. He won a tough race with the Bluegrass by a neck, but probably my top choice, if not Kings him. Barn. I love this choice. This is my choice. Top uh, second horse, Jose Ortiz, which has already won today on the yep. card. Uh, very overwhelming at the Louisiana Derby, which is the New Orleans. Uh, same one. Same thing though, kind of got off on a hot start, no real competition, took off, and he was first by three and a half lengths. Uh, he is now 10 to 1, he's in the top five choices. Well, 10 to 1, it's, it's gone down, he was 12 to 1. 12 to 1, well, everything's going to go down because the favorite went, uh, went out. Oh, went out, I got the it. The 3 to 1 gotcha. favorite for Tate's out, so you can see his odds slim up for what? We incarnate uh, Vlad for seven. is a veteran jockey. Yakutin is the trainer. He came in at the Arkansas Derby third, four and three four. Some people think he can make a step up at a big price. He was fifty to one on the morning line. People must love him in the works and what they're seeing because he's thirteen to one after the scratch of Forte and the current betting odds. From what I saw, he was trained by Bob Baffert before he went into the Rebel. The Rebel he finished third at two and a half lengths behind. And then he went into the Arkansas Derby. Both are at Oakland, both are big derby prep, right? And he finished with that. I didn't like what I saw. But what I've been hearing all day is he looks good, the chatter's good, and a lot, it's three old. Sometimes they just need a month and they need a freshen up and they can come back. Not my horse today, but if you get him, you're not getting him at 51, you're getting him at 13 to one. Lucky number seven, unlucky. Now the eight, we gotta talk. Oh baby, man. Mage is Mage. the eight. Got three races in the eight. Okay? He went in the Florida Derby against what was supposed to be the biggest badass horse, for lack of better words, Forte. He got, didn't get out of the game. Horrible start. Buffed out of the game. Usually when you do that, you don't have a hope. That horse should have won. Forte just showed such a strong effort of what a good horse he was and why he won the Breeders' Cup and why he was the favorite today. He came flying. Flying around the turn. I don't know how he even lost. Second by a length. This horse, I like this horse that can come off the pace. This horse right now is 17 to 1, opened up at 15 to 1. With Tap It, the 8's going on my ticket for Exactus and Typhecta. Please look out for the 8. Castellano is the jockey. And the thing is, you don't really know about the trainer, not a big name, Gustavo, Delgado Gustavo. So we'll see what happens. I want to make sure our seats were saved. I say this is <laughs> three of them. One, three, you, Deeper. People are starting to come in, folks. Come on down to Brothers Bar and Grill. Shots to Northfield. The nine came out of the Santa Anita Derby. Ran a great effort. Third scratch. The ten practical move. Big scratch. Won the Santa Anita Derby. Uh, heavy temperature. They decided to scratch the horse a couple days ago. The eleven disarm. We're going to try to keep it short and, short and sweet. Joe Rosario, great jockey. Steve Asmussen, great trainer. The name, when I first looked at the list before I knew anything about these horses, when I look at names and the number, he's, he's the 11. He's the Messier. He's got a gray, gray sweater when he runs. It intrigued me. I'm going to have to do a small win bet. I do not like what I'm seeing out of the horse. Finished third in the uh, Lexington. Finished second in the Derby. Uh, but could show up at the big effort today with the right trip. Small win bet on him. He's one of those. He's a name and a C bet, not anything other than that. Jason's Road, Guru, Brad Cox, third horse, the number 12. 
the Louisiana Derby didn't like the race. Third by six and a quarter lengths. The Southwest finished fifth by a quarter and ten. By uh, excuse me, twelve and three. But people, fifty to one on the morning line, thirty-two right now. Good jockey, throwing them out. That's just my personal opinion. Don't like the horse, throwing them out. Sun Thunder came out of the bluegrass, finished six and a half lengths and fourth. Came out of Louisiana Derby, finished fifth, eight and a half lengths back. The Risen Star, the race before that, finished second by just not seeing it. Hernandez is there, Ken the Peak, great jockey for our great trainer. Not seeing it. If you like the A-Rod, he's your number 13. Take him, but not for me. Number 13. Our number 14. Our current co- or maybe even the favorite right now. Angel of the Empire. Four to one. Flavian Pratt, very good jockey last three years. Brad Cox, four tours. Looks to be maybe his most dangerous. I don't know if that you can say that. He won the Arkansas Derby, won it very overwhelmingly. Very big race in Oakland Park, won it by four and a quarter lengths. He won the Risen Star uh, by a length. Uh, mile and an eighth, mile and an eighth. Today we're going mile and a quarter. Got off to a pretty good lead and never looked back. The thing you gotta look about this horse, Classic Empire, great one. And honestly, everybody's starting to chatter that he's the one. They think he's fresher than, say, maybe my choice, Tappet. And we'll see what happens. But your co-favorite, if not, he'll probably go off as the odds-on favorite. I'm guessing. I'm guessing no more, no less than seven to two, if not four to one. He's an eight and one, eight and eight and one on the ESPN this morning. He was no eight to one on the morning line. Those are all morning lines. That's right. Okay, so these are four all to one right now with gotcha. scratch to four. Gotcha. Touch. Okay. Then we have the number fifteen Forte Savvy Scratch. We already told you the story. Uh, so that whole connection is a sad day over there. Race Canes, the 16, uh, going to be a long shot. 50 to 1, 30 to 1 on the morning line. Bluegrass, he finished six and three quarters. Bluegrass is, is in Kentucky. It's at Keeneland. It's one of the big derby preps. He did the Gotham, which he did win in New York, which is kind of a, a race up to the, uh, their other big one, uh, the Wood Memorial. Uh, he did win first at seven and a half with Lascano as jockey. Uh, Lascano is not riding today, but if you want to get a big price after a horse that won a good race and maybe threw up a bad one, get raised canes. It's also named, if for you who are very into the church, I read into a story, it's named after the Bible with Cain in the Bible. It's, if you look into it, it's well, a big old story. I always thought that in the South you talk about raising Cain, you know, raising well, Cain is causing trouble. Party and having We're a good not talking time. about the chicken joint that opened up down the street here either. We're talking about the Bible, and this is what it was named after. Okay. So what did that really? So scared? they're raising Cain, who Cain and Abel. Yeah, that's what we're talking it was about. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. The 17th Derby Sorigate. First of two Japanese horses. The other one got in off the eligible. This horse went to the UAB Derby. This is in uh, Maidan. Uh, overseas, big races over there. Horse looked fast, got off to an alarming Japanese switch. horse, right? Japanese horse, but race uh, in the Middle East on, on a big uh, Saudi Cup right. day, which is big money day. Uh, if you watch the race, look fast, look fit, look furious. Will he get an early lead like that in the Derby? I don't think so. But right now, he's your third or fourth choice right now. Eight to one, ten to one was the morning line. Eight to one. This, Japan's looking to win one of these. They got two horses, and I think both of them have a shot. Do not write off the 17. Rocket can. Last one, folks. No, 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 no. We no, have more? No, no, no. Junior Alvarado, love Junior Alvarado, New York jockey. Rides long shots very well. He finished fourth at the Arkansas Derby. He finished second in the Fountain Youth and won the Holy Bowl. Those are all Derby preps. Um, all written by Junior Alvarado. Will Mock trainer, great trainer. What scares me about this is this jockey can win in long shots. I've had him a lot of times in the New York Racing Association. Um, what I don't like is the races. Ever since the Holy Bowl against better competition, I'm not seeing the efforts. If you want a good price, uh, 30 to 1 on the morning line, 27 to 1 on Rocket Can uh, with a jockey who can ride long shots to victory. Junior Alvarado, I don't believe, has ever won a Kentucky Derby. Lord Miles, we talked about scratch because of his trainer and the death of the track. Continuar was a second, uh, he was a third 
in the same race we just talked about the number 17, right. which was number Soda Guy, another Japanese horse. Wasn't really in contention. I believe they just scratched him because he wasn't ready. I don't think he was ready. I didn't hear anything about him right. in terms of a fever, uh, anything going on with that. Right. Three also eligibles get in, and we're going to ride with 18 today because Forte scratched. We usually have 20. Cyclone Mischief did not look terrible at the Florida Derby, but wasn't with the Top Guns. All three of these also eligibles are going to have big prices. 30 to 1, 21 to 1, and 32 to 1. They all have a shot by mind. I like the way he ran. I think he can improve. Finished third at the Florida Derby, third at the Fountain Youth. You could see another, tr the last year was the 21 that came right, in and won. Right. Yep. I, I have a feeling. This one I like. Mandarin this Hero. one is going to be in my probably my exact deal. If I do, I'm going to spread exact. I'm going to spread some tries. I'm going to do some wins. We got the race going on here. No bets. Maryland Hero. He came flying at the Santa Anita Derby like a bat out of hell late, which is what you need in this race. If he can, and did not get out of the uh, gate well either. Not great. The other two horses I told you I liked didn't get out. If they get out of the gate well and do run. See this horse coming by, he could be a surprise. 21 to 1 out of San Anita Derby. My last horse, King Russell, he finished a decisive second at the Oakland Park in a, in a good race. And then you also have him first in the neck of his maiden. King Russell at 32 to 1 can step up. Do not leave any of these three also eligibles if you like him out of your ticket. We're here at race 7. Twin Spires, Turf Sprint, it's on the grass. We did no bets. We're going to finish up with you. We took the race off to finish up with you. And Jim, do you have any? Ooh, who's your pick today? Well, my pick, of course, is going to be King's Barn. Um, but I'm also going to be probably one following a lot of what he does, mainly because look at the research he did, folks. Excellent section. He's been I mean, a really big. good segment for for uh, Patrick the Picker and uh, did some great research. Has it right here. We're watching this down the stretch. Is this the guy? What are the odds on this gentleman right here? Look, looks like he already. No balls. 38 to 1 on five and a half furlongs. They let him loose on the front end, and you're going to see some prices, folks. Good thing we maybe took. I didn't have him on the board. No. I had Ghost Bear. Go Bear goes as the two. He might have came in second. Uh, but I think you're seeing a 38 to 1. This is what horse racing is all about. Yeah, 38 to 1. That would have been a good one to bet. All right, so we ended it. Well, Les, thank you very much for tuning in. Cheers. Cheers. Kentucky Derby Saturday. Come on down to Brothers. Check us out. We will be here all day. And you can hear the sound is on. Uh, this is a lot better place than going to, uh, you know, Red and Jerry's or something like that. You know, you, uh, you have better TVs and you have a lot more space, plus you have a lot better food. You have a lot better people. And a lot better people. <laughs> you know the best there is? The best Not to say anything bad about Red and Jerry's, because I've spent a lot of time at Red and Jerry's over the years. Uh, but, it just uh, looks like 1, 11, 11 two. 2. Okay. Folks, we want you to remember to come back and visit us uh, next week. We were not going to be able to do the show. I'm unfortunately going to be uh, stuck out of town. And Patrick, I think you're going to be doing some stuff too. Yeah, um, my birthday's coming up. I got to go to New Mexico. We got Mother's Day on Sunday. We're yeah. going to try to do as best we can, get you some derby results and whatnot. Maybe one of these days we'll do a remote show where we're doing it like in the, in the, in the, yeah, the, uh, the man cave. Yeah, we'll see. But, Definitely. Hey. Um, Go ahead. We always say, just end it the way we do. Oh, yeah. Just get out there, guys. Get your side hustle on. Make some bets today and earn it. Thank you very much for tuning in, folks. Get out and watch the Kentucky Derby. Come on down here to Brothers. We'll be here all afternoon. Thank you very much.